Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fosco. We're here for another edition of the show. Well, hey, you know what? It's, so you wanted to be a video podcaster episode or, or edition three, right? So um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm looking over here. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not in the normal set. I'm actually in my bedroom, but I got the green screen set up behind me. Um, I've got my computers all going on here. They're all big white so I got light. It's kind of cool. This is the first time I've done this setup exactly. Um, I've got in my actual uh, ceiling fan light. I've actually got 5K lights. I'm using two computer screens and the TV screen to illuminate everything. I don't actually need to use these uh, today, but these are LED, 5K LED uh, lights I usually use to illuminate the green screen. I'm pretty excited about that, but it is also daylight kind of outside, so um, we'll see how all that works. But uh, so this is a special series of episodes that I'm going to be doing that will help you if you are looking to do video podcasting specifically. But honestly, after the first, what, like two episodes um, in the series, it's basically the same thing as um, being a YouTuber. Um, so it, 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 most, most of the stuff is relevant, though when I talk about podcast elements, then yes, it's a little bit different. All right, so um, let's just get started. So first things first. So you want to be a podcaster, video podcaster. It doesn't have to be about wine. I don't know. It could be about mugs. It could be about electronics. It could be about, I don't know, quilting. You don't want to show people how you do, I don't know, there's all types of little like what, little like knots and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can, you can podcast about anything. I mean, video is great because you get to show people stuff. I mean, yeah, you can take pictures on your blog and uh, write everything, and that's cool. Um, but let, let's talk about, like, your idea. It can be anything. Just come up with an idea. You don't necessarily have to be an expert in it immediately, but because you're going to be researching everything, I mean, you might be very well-versed in it. Some people don't do this until they're really well-versed. I was fairly, like, knowledgeable uh, about wine as a general rule, but I use this podcast as the first really two, two-ish years, whatever, until I actually passed my first intro exam was effectively my diary of studying. So every time I try to wine, I would delve into that area, learn more about it. I mean, I was reading books and all that. Like I, I was reading, uh, I mean, I read this one, believe it or not, this is actually a good book, um, like in, for like a introductory type of stuff. And there's other books you can get. Um, so, uh, yeah, you don't have to necessarily be an expert, but you can also use it to help learn and help force yourself to become an expert or become knowledgeable in an area because you're putting it out there on video. Just like as if you're writing a blog, you're, you're asserting yourself as having some type of knowledge about something and you don't want to mess up, right? So hopefully if you're doing it right, you're researching a lot so that you can really do it. Um, so one of the things I, I suggest, uh, so we're talking about ideas, branding, social media tools. That's what this episode is about. Um, so anyway, uh, use a name. I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I wrote some notes for myself. Use a name that makes sense. 1337 wine, AKA Leet wine for a wine review show. Doesn't exactly make sense considering, especially when I first started, I was doing wines that are definitely under $20. Most of them were 15 and under. That's not exactly elite wine. But I came up with the brand like three months prior to that. I had thoughts of maybe creating a wine. I mean, it was the it was it was thought up of because I saw a wine that said 337, and I thought it was angled in a certain way that the one was missing that you couldn't see, and that missing that wasn't there, or you couldn't see it, and it literally wasn't there because 337 is a clone of Cabernet Sauvignon, and that's the name of the wine, 337. 
It's a cab, and at the time it was $15. I think it's like $12-ish now. I think it's out there still. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while, but I haven't looked for it either. It was the very first one I did review, though. And so I was kind of hoping, please don't sue me for, like, look and feel. But there's a possibility that somebody might have thought I was representing that wine. But after, the, after looking at the rest of the episodes, you can tell I'm not representing the wine. I just have a similar name. But if you look at my logo, my logo is Digital Fonts. Um, it is a black background, red red numbering or lettering, just like their wine is a black label with red lettering, but it's a different font. So, I mean, could they really come at me with a cease and desist letter? Maybe, but in the court of law, if I had a good lawyer, if I could afford a good lawyer, um, I could maybe convince a jury that there was enough of a difference in what I do versus what they do that I'm not infringing on any type of copyright or anything like that. Um, but yeah, use a, use a name that makes sense. Um, logo. Use a logo that also makes sense. I mean, obviously my logo is, is has it's a digital or calculator font. Um, I'm trying to be techy and geeky because, you know, 1337 spells leet. It's leet speak. And if you're a geek like me, you already know what it is. If you don't, if you're not really into geeky stuff, then yes, I always have to explain it. But it's kind of a calculator thing. And so it was, it was definitely done on purpose because I was going for that type of look and feel. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do the logo immediately, but as soon as you're going to start doing stuff, you definitely should have a logo of some sort. Um, one of the things that I do, um, oh yeah, it says, uh, mine plays off the geek element more than the wine element, other than wine being a, um, a, uh, a way to run Windows applications. It's like an application and on like Mac OS and like Solaris and Linux and whatever, there's a thing called Wine. And what it does allows you to run a Windows application on that operating system instead of Windows. So like somebody who isn't into Wine but knows that might go, ooh, he's gonna talk about Wine applications. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> or applications run on Wine or how to use it. So again, if I had thought about what I was doing with the name, I might have chosen something else for the podcast. But I also thought it might be a cool name for a wine. Again, 337 Wine, which is, is, a, is, the, is the name of, of a specific wine from, a, from the company. I can't remember their parent, parent company, but that's their shtick is that they use the clone numbers for the wines. Um, also, my shoulder's starting to hurt. It sucks because it's probably gonna hurt for like the next 20 minutes. I'm gonna be really distracted. Um, and it hasn't done this in a long, long time. Anyway, um, uh, so yeah, logo, you probably want to get it ready if you're going to start, once you start uh, producing stuff, make sure it makes sense. Uh, social media. So as soon as you come up with your branding, um, and this is going to kind of d delve into um, uh, the next episode where you create your URL, but we're going to talk about that differently. But we're talking about the branding. You want to get your name, you want to reserve your name on as many social media platforms as possible, whatever you've come up with the brand. Um, you know, if I was, my, if my brand was Mark Fusco, well, at least I'm not John Smith, which, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of John Smiths in America alone, the United States alone. As far as Mark Fuscos, there aren't a lot of Mark Fuscos, and some of them may say Fusco because that's the original Italian name. I know there's uh, the hockey player, who's a few years older than I am, um, and I know there's an artist that's on the East Coast somewhere, um, and I know that there's a baseball player um, who's, I think in high school or whatever, because I get the Google alerts from him. Um, and then there, uh, unfortunately, there is a gentleman that uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, he lived in Florida. He was, uh, he was did, like the laparoscopic surgery, lap band stuff. So, um, you know, I, I know of a few Mark Fuscos out there, at least that are on the internet. Outside of that, you know, there's probably a few hundred of us around the country. Um, but anyway, so you want to pick a, uh, try to get your Twitter name as fast as you can. Um, so, Twitter, I'm talking about each type of social media platform. Twitter, I look at Twitter as like a radio ad, like you're in your car or a TV ad, um, and it, you put your tweet out there and it's really ephemeral, right? Um, unless someone's on their stream at the time that you tweet, the chances are they're not gonna see it. Now, when people first got on Twitter, they don't follow a lot of people, and, and I, I did it. I know everyone else who has Twitter, almost everybody probably has done it is you, you check in the Twitter multiple times a day, especially if it's new, you wanna check it out, and you scroll until you get to the last tweet you remember. So yes, it's, it's my tweets or your tweets could be seen by that person from two, three hours ago. But 
people start following a lot of people. And when you start following hundreds, if not thousands of people, you're not going to scroll. The only way you're going to see that my tweet came out is if you went to my Twitter feed itself and decided to look at my feed because, hey, what did Mark post? So I look at Twitter as ephemeral. So you need to tweet a lot so that your tweets show up on their feeds. Um, I forgot what the official, or what was official like several years ago. I think it was around 30, 20 to 30 a day. I mean, I post, I think at least 10, um, but you definitely want to do, you know, at least that and spread it out. Um, and I'll talk about how to do that later. Uh, Facebook. So I think Facebook is, I used to think Twitter was the best because that's what I was on first and Facebook I wasn't on at first because you had to be a student. Then they opened up to the public and I got on there and I remember like, well, this is better than being on MySpace because I compared it to MySpace. Um, it was cleaner. It didn't look like it was, you know, it didn't have all that stupid flashy stuff, you know, like, ugh, it looked like an old, what was it? Uh, GeoCities website was Facebook. Not Facebook, um, MySpace. Now MySpace is pretty much just strictly like music, which is what it started off as to begin with. Um, but anyway, Facebook I look as, um, there is some immediacy to it, but there's also some staying power to your posts because as everybody knows is on Facebook, you may not see every single person's post right when they post it, but you might see it a few hours later. You might see it in a day or two later. It might just pop up in your feed, okay? So Facebook posts, have a little more permanence to them. And I think and you could, there's a little more flexibility with them. Yes, Twitter has gotten rid of the 140 character limit. I think it's 280 now. Um, you can post pictures and videos on Twitter. I mean, I do. I mean, not videos necessarily. I post links to my videos. I mean, I used to post pictures all the time. I'll be honest, pretty much all my tweets on Twitter are all scheduled tweets. I, I rarely ever tweet unless I get on Twitter and I'm replying to somebody. And I do apologize for all my Twitter followers that maybe send me DMs or, uh, or, or mentions, um, because I haven't really had Twitter on my phone as far as social media is concerned in a long time. Um, cause I'm supposed to be studying it. I mean, I'm in Facebook during all my heart, heart surgery recovery. I remember that. Yeah. I had heart surgery. It went well. Huh. Yeah. I haven't really recorded anything since then. Surgery was perfect. I went to, back to my day job. Um, this, this week that I recorded it, this is the middle of August. So August 14th, I went back to work. It's funny cause I went back to work and had two days off, which is my normal days off. Um, so I'm back to work, thankfully. Um, all I can say is it sucked to go through all that and to be on medical leave for all that time and pretty much at the house all the time. I mean, the very, very, very last week of my medical leave, I tried to go out a little bit more, try to be more involved in the public. And, I mean, I went to a little tasting to stand on my feet for a little bit, just kind of prepare for work. So, but other than that, yeah. And I'm still not 100%, but I'm definitely good enough to go to work. Anyway, so um, uh, anyway, so Facebook, I'm sorry, Twitter, I'm sorry about the, uh, I haven't been on there very often. Uh, so Facebook, yeah, you can, you, posts can show up later. Um, let's see, pro tip, you can go through your, oh, so if you haven't seen someone's post in a while, um, what I have found, and this is not, maybe not 100% like, like correct, I don't know, but what I have found is that if, let's say I'm like, man, I haven't seen a post from so-and-so in a while. So I'll go to their feed, I'll go to their page, and I'll check out their stuff. And maybe they haven't posted in a long time. That's fine. Maybe they did post like today or yesterday or day before, and I just haven't seen their posts. Um, and I will interact with that. And I have found that sometimes all of a sudden I start seeing their posts a little more often. You know, Facebook's trying to figure out who do you interact with the most and show you their stuff more than anything else. Like if you always interact with, with a particular person, you will always see their posts. You might even get notifications about their stuff. I mean, I don't know how to say I have like one of my Facebook friends on my main account. I get every time they post something, I actually get a notification. I don't remember setting up anything like that. And I haven't gone into to change because I actually do want to see their posts. So um, anyway, so that's kind of a thing that I, I've come across, but I haven't like proved it. Um, another thing about Facebook. Okay, so this just happened August 1st, 2018 cross posting from outside sources. So, um, Twitter, which you, you know, I've talked about just now, I have scheduled posts and I have, I think 63 posts each week and 13 of them are posts to say, Hey, go to my website because I got a new episode up and it's like two per day, except Sunday I post one. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I actually schedule them. Um, as far as which posts are on which day is just kind of whatever, except for the very, very first post. I always post it at 8 a.m. Central Time, and it is start your week with 
because it seems stupid to put it on a Saturday, start your week. I'm like, well, my week started Monday. So that's the only one I actually schedule at a certain time and day. The rest of it just kind of a morning and an after, morning and an evening, th you know, post and sometimes something in the middle of the night or something late afternoon or whatever. So, um, but I had a little hashtag, hashtag FB, because there is a um, app, a Facebook app called Selective Twitter. Also Selective Tweets, you know, it depends on how you want to call it. And what it does is it monitors a Twitter feed, presumably yours, because you don't actually log in, you just give it the feed. And if it sees that hash, <clears throat> if it sees that hashtag at the end of the tweet, it pulls it and posts it to Facebook. So that's how my Facebook posts would always happen, you know, all the time. August 1st, Facebook basically made that type of functionality like impossible to do. Um, Instagram, I think was already stopping that kind of Facebook, and, and even though Facebook owns Instagram, but I figured out a way to do that. So it's a little complicated, but so the average person has a Facebook page, right? It's their personal page, they post stuff on there. But then you also have business pages, right? So you could be a restaurant, it could be you know, a clothing store, it could be your podcast. So Instagram, and um, also I'll get to it in a little bit, but Instagram, if I set up an Instagram business account, which it's just a, it kind of, I think it kind of figures out you might be a business based upon your name or whatever, because it asks you forever till you say yes. And I finally did this week, honestly. And if you do that, it will post to your business page and then you have to go into your business page and then be logged in as you, and then you can share that post because anybody can share that post. So you got to get people to like your business page. So, I mean, I got, I got to get, you know, out of my 1500 plus friends, I got to get more than to like the business page so that they start seeing that stuff. Um, let's see what else. Um, same thing happens with WordPress. Um, you can post it to your business page. So anything that cross posts from it to Facebook, that functionality has been either completely eliminated or you hopefully have a way with that other service to go do my business page, which you probably have to be logged into a computer, be logged into Facebook, or at least your browser has, you have been logged into that Facebook page, your business page, and then it'll come up, hey, you wanna log in as Facebook, and then your little business page icon will come up and say yes. So that's how you get around it for now. Why does Facebook do this? Well, it's supposed to be with the whole like, Russian and hacker and in fake accounts and all that kind of stuff that's been blowing up for the past couple of years, right? So Facebook's trying like, let's get rid of that stuff. So presumably a business page is a legitimate page instead of a bunch of like fake accounts that are trying to do stuff. That's scratchy, I don't wanna hit my, um, my microphone. Uh, Instagram, all right, so I kind of already talked about Instagram being able to post to Facebook, but Instagram, so to me, it's like really only useful if your subject matter um, is conducive to taking photos, which a lot of things are. I mentioned quilting, these things. I mean, you want to take a picture of um, some thermos or whatever, you know, insulated thing, you know, Yetis or whatever. You want to do electronics, you want to take a picture of your electronics, you want to take a picture of your photographer. You know, and I mean, as a photographer, maybe video podcasting isn't, I mean, you could do it because you can tell people how to do, how to take photos and then you can have your photos on there. So, I mean, if, if, if Instagram makes sense on a photo sense, then do it. It's kind of like Facebook because you will see posts from earlier in the day or day or two earlier. So you don't always see like just, it's not like Twitter where it's just the fire hose and that's the only thing you see is whatever's right then and there. Um, see, I already talked about that. Yeah. Um, I, and I really just, I mean, I use it. I use, so I use Instagram different than Facebook. Facebook, I post like kind of the human element with me and Twitter kind of, not really. Um, whereas Facebook, whereas Instagram, I tend to post pictures of wine bottles or if I've traveled somewhere that's a wine destination. However, um, I posted the picture of what's going on today. Um, I was like, hey, I'm lights, camera, action. I'm, I'm doing blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, if it's related to what I'm doing wine-wise, I tend to do it. Um, but I've also, like, I went to concerts and I posted vid, uh, photos of that. So I, I, I do put that little human element in Instagram. At first, I never did. I was like, why do I want Instagram? 
But then I followed all my friends and well, taking pictures of their bottles that like, oh, this rare bottle, this unicorn bottle. I'm like, well, that's great, but I can't afford that. I'm, I'm never going to drink that. So I just post whatever I review, you know, or I post just stuff I'm out and about drinking type of stuff. So that, that I use it for that. Um, Hootsuite. This is my secret weapon. So Hootsuite for for the past, I don't know, like year or so. I mean, I've been a member of Hootsuite for a very long time, but I've only used it recently because all the other services I've used in the past to do scheduled tweets don't work anymore or they became enterprise and they became stupidly expensive. So Hootsuite has come to the rescue. You can post on not just Twitter, you can post on lots of other social media platforms. Um, you can schedule a little over 300 posts in advance. Um, that's kind of what I did for the, 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 the six, ah, here we go, uh, for the six episodes um, prior to uh, this episode. I uh, set up all the tweets ahead of time. There's a few I didn't do. Um, you know, I think I was going to try to get on screen and all that. I actually have to schedule next week's last wine review <laughs> for the 20th of August. I just realized I haven't actually scheduled them because I hit the limit. Um, so uh, I'm making sure that the uh, screen doesn't go off again because that's my lights. Those are my lights for to light me up. Um, anyway, uh, it costs $15 a month, so it's not free. I think it's worth it for scheduling tweets. Um, you can post to Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, WordPress, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, um, and also Facebook. But um, just like Instagram and WordPress, like I said, you on, on Hootsuite, you are posting to your business page. And then you have to share it. You have to go into Facebook and share it. So it's not as automatic as it as like you've my selective Twitter or excuse me, or if um, I had set up special Facebook posts in Hootsuite. Now I might do that. So what happens is I, when I the way I've used Hootsuite is is like pick your social network. And I'm like, well, Twitter, duh. Well, that's because I never linked up any of the other social media outlets that I'm on. Now I am on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I actually am on Google Plus. Does anyone use it anymore? Um YouTube, I don't see the point in posting Hootsuite to YouTube. So I don't know, or maybe YouTube posts. I don't know how that works. Um, and Pinterest, well, Pinterest is like Instagram, I kind of think, but you pin stuff. So I didn't get on Pinterest because I'm on Instagram. Um, but you can you can send stuff to Pinterest. So um, but so you could create a whole bunch of tweets ahead of time. You upload them. There's a bulk uploader. And then you say, I want this social network to get these posts. And then when you look at, you can look at like a calendar or a list view or whatever. And it has like a little icon of your social media profile picture for that particular social media and like the small like logos, like the little bird for Twitter. Okay. Um, let's see. I use a spreadsheet to uh, create these because you have, when you upload the bulk upload, you have to do a dot CSV, which means comma separated value. Uh, so you have to do, do a dot CSV file. Um, Excel is the, the, like the vast majority of what people use. I use Excel. I mean, I have a Mac. I also have numbers. Um, I use numbers and other things, but for like more business type stuff, like at work, I of course I use Excel. So if I need to do stuff at home, I use Excel. But um, on that particular thing, I just want to make sure I was fully compatible with Hootsuite. So um, I, I, uh, I have a spreadsheet that's a normal spreadsheet. And then when I create all my tweets, um, which of the six of the other what 50, they're all exactly the same. Okay. So they're just cycled through. Um, it's just Twitter. Make sure you don't like duplicate tweets, like one after the other, like the same tweet in a row. Like you can do the same tweet, like a few days later, day later, a few hours later, even. Um, but they don't want to see like the same tweet, you know, every tweet's the same because they'll say, Hey, you've a duplicate tweet. Um, so the other 50 are exactly the same. I probably should change it up a little bit because I've been using the same freaking tweets for like, I think four years, five years, um, other than the, you know, the, um, the episode tweets that so they're actually still the same tweets. It's just all I change. All I do is change the, the episode name. Um, so I use this, I use it for that. Um, YouTube. Okay. I know we're talking about video podcasting. Um, you're like, well, YouTube, yeah, I'll put myself on YouTube and I'll be my podcast. You can't use it. I will talk about it again in a later episode. You can use YouTube. I definitely do because that's how I embed my videos now onto my website. I used other services in the past um, that are now defunct or again became too expensive to use. Um, so YouTube is free. Okay. Uh, WordPress. 
Um, basically, you're going to have a, I have a WordPress account or I have, I have a WordPress website. I use a managed, I go through a managed WordPress hosting, managed WordPress host. Um, so they, they handle all the updates and all the backend stuff for me and I just have to post. Um, you can use other things, but WordPress I like because it has a lot of flexibility to it. Other social media, um, honestly, you know what? Uh, I don't use any of the other ones. Uh, I, I mentioned a bunch of the other ones. Um, I mean, if you think that they're great, cool. Um, but, you know, I, if I maybe was, this was my only way I made income, um, I might get, I might just completely just over, you know, do everything. I might hit all the video sites. I might hit, you know, every social media outlet out there and just like blast it. But, you know, those are the main social media places. Um, you can, like when something new comes around, you can like go, let me grab my, my name so that nobody else takes it, especially something that somebody might take. But at this point, those are the, those are the big players and that's who you should probably use. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I went a slightly bit longer than I expected, about 20, a little over 20 minutes, but that's okay. Um, Stay tuned for more episodes. Uh, it's great to be back on the set. It's a different set, but great to be back uh, making some episodes. Um, I'm not drinking until the end of September. Um, so another reason why to make these episodes, because I'm not going to do any wine reviews anyway. So I've I've digitally circled October 1st, so I can start drinking again. I don't know if it's going to be the exact date I have a glass of wine after work, because I'm kind of working all those days at my day job, or night job, really. Um, but... Um, I do plan to enjoy some wine and maybe on whatever day off it is that I have after I can start drinking again, open up a bottle of bubbly. Matter of fact, uh, I kind of have a somewhat plan to do some, some bubbles in an episode around that. So hopefully we'll do that. All right. Anyway, uh, click me, click the links above the front of me up, click any links below about all the stuff I just talked about. And, uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time.